What's up, Fight Fans? It's time for another edition of Covering the Cage. Heidi Fang here in studio in Las Vegas, but out in Brooklyn, New York. We have Adam Hill coming in to join us via Skype. Adam, what's it like out there in Brooklyn? Is it still snowing? Uh, no more snow. It's rainy and cold and miserable, and uh, I can't wait to be home. To make light of some of the misery out there, Adam, we have a new main event for UFC 223. We have Max Holloway stepping in to fill the shoes that Tony Ferguson left empty when he had to step out due to injury against Habib Nurmagomedov. So this being a big lightweight championship fight is interesting because Tony is now stripped, I guess, or had to vacate the interim belt. Um, basically, what do you make of the fight now against Max and Habib, Max stepping in on just six days' notice? I mean, it's as good as you're going to get. I mean, that, that's the bottom line. We have been hesitant to talk about, you know, Khabib and Tony fighting for a long time because we were scared it was going to get canceled, and now it has. But the reason you're, you know, kind of worried about it being canceled is because it's happened before, and it has been very difficult to find, you know, suitable fights to fill in. In this case, I don't think you can do any better. You get Max Holloway, the featherweight champion, on a long winning streak. Nurmagomedov has been phenomenal. Uh, everybody still wants to see Tony in, in Nurmagomedov, but uh, if you can't have that, this is the next best thing. And, you know, if Max Holloway had a full camp, I think this would be a really, really intriguing fight. I, I think, you know, the fact that he doesn't and he has to cut so much weight and he has so little time to prepare for a style like Nurmagomedov makes things different. Uh, but this is still very intriguing with a lot of storylines. Especially intriguing, I thought, because we saw the UFC Embedded episode. You see Max cutting weight right alongside of Habib, and I thought that was pretty interesting that they already have that close quarters type of confrontation when they're both uh, looking ahead to this fight. But they seem to show a lot of respect for each other, and Habib especially showing respect because Max is stepping up. But I have to agree with you that I think it may be a little much for Max coming in with a huge weight cut. I was reading that his nutritionist said it may be one of the worst weight cuts he's had to put on any fighter, not just for Max, but for any fighter that he's ever worked with. And in addition to that, just having the short time, I mean, flying in from Hawaii to New York, that's not an easy flight. The time change, having to readjust to all of that, acclimate, and then get ready to go ahead and, and, and fight with one of the baddest lightweights on the planet. Not going to be an easy cakewalk for Max, but he's a warrior. That's what he does. And he stepped up. It's a big opportunity for him. And I think either way, he doesn't really lose because he's not putting his own belt on the line. In the grand scheme of things, you might look back and you might forget all the circumstances around it. But, you know, in this moment, we know what he's up against. It's not just the weight cut, which is brutal. And from everything we hear, he got here to New York a little bit over 180 to try to get down to 155 at the end of the week. That's insane. Uh, but he's, you know, he's got to deal with the weight cut. He's got to deal with the travel, uh, the lack of preparation and everything else. And he's going against probably the toughest person to prepare for. Uh, in the entire sport. So uh, a lot of factors going against Max Holloway, but still, I, I, I think it's a, you know, it's a really, really good fight. There's a lot of, you know, good stories with, you know, you, it's, you struggle to kind of break it down. Okay. Well, Connor has the title, but Tony has the interim belt, but they're both going to be stripped as of Saturday. But then even if Connor doesn't get stripped and Tony is like, it's all, there's so much, um, you know, there's so much up in the air. There's so much unsettled. But the fact of the matter is, after Saturday night, we're going to have one lightweight champion. It's either going to be the guy that's the featherweight champion in Max Holloway or the guy that everybody thinks is the best lightweight in Khabib Nurmagomedov. On that note, who are you taking to win this fight? Listen, I think you know from working with me for long enough, there's no chance I'm ever picking against Nurmagomedov. Uh, I think he beats anyone. He's the worst style matchup for anybody to try to prepare for. Uh, it's very tough to go uh, against him. I think Max Holloway with a full camp and a in a you know full preparation to try to get ready. His takedown defense is really good, and I think he can compete. But he's just coming in off an injury. He hasn't been in the gym for very long, and now he's got to go through this weight cut and fight Nurmagomedov. That's a very tall order. I'll give Max the benefit of the doubt and say he can make it through. He can make the five rounds, but I don't see how he can win. Yeah, I think as well that this fight may go the distance. I don't see uh, Max getting finished, even though Habib is very, very dangerous, especially if he can get you where he wants you, which is usually in close quarters and on the mat, they're back on the canvas. So uh, I have to as well agree with you that Nurmagomedov is the pick here. Max, it just if he had a full camp, I'd say he had a shot, that, you know, maybe without that drastic weight cut. As you said, 180, that's a lot to cut. But in the co-main event, we have a rematch between the strawweights, 
going for the belt again, Joanna Yunjacek, and Rose Namajunas, who currently holds the title. Uh, a lot of people out there saying, especially Joanna, saying that it was a fluke that Rose was able to capture the title, that Rose was able to get that belt. But uh, Joanna looks pretty furious in everything that I've seen of her this week. And uh, Rose, on the other hand, looks very focused, very composed, as she did in the first fight. Uh, this fight, again, very intriguing. I like that Rose has shown a lot of maturity. I like that Rose has shown a lot of focus and composure during everything. I don't know how the, the, smack, the smack talk will be coming up this week. You're going to get to see it all live. But what do you make of this matchup, Adam? Yeah, I think, you know, I do believe Joanna's contention that much of her, you know, poor performance in the last fight when, when she lost her title had to do with a very bad wake up. We heard all week. Uh, I remember being uh, in the in the room where the uh, weigh-ins were taking place and, uh, you know, me and you were there waiting for Joanna when everybody else had already weighed in. And the word was that it was going very poorly. Uh, she made it. She looked terrible. And then she performed that way in the fight. Now, that doesn't always translate. You don't always have a, a bad weight cut and then, you know, fight badly. But it certainly could be a factor. And and I do think it was a big factor in it. Now, what happens is Rose now has the confidence because one of the biggest questions everybody had about her was always confidence. Well, she has the confidence now. She has the belt. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense that she comes in to this fight believing she's going to win, thinking she can win. Uh, but Joanna, I think, has that strong desire to get the title back. I think she's worked uh, harder than she ever has in this camp to try to get it back. Remember, there was a time a lot of people thought that she was unbeatable at 115 in just a matter of time until she gets the 125 title, which, uh, you know, that's all been put off for now. But, uh, you know, I, I think Joanna comes in and looks totally different in this fight. Uh, I do believe in Rose. I think Rose is a phenomenal talent. Uh, but I think this is going to be a rivalry. We kind of see the, the belt go back and forth a little bit. And I think. Um, you know, it, it's certainly not going to look like the same fight it did last. And who are you taking to take this one? Well, I think I started to indicate it a little bit, but I'm going to, I will go uh, with Joanna to win by decision uh, in this fight. I think it's going to be a really good fight. I think uh, this is one that's going to go down as uh, one of the better women's fights we've seen uh, just because of, of those factors. Rose with confidence in everything that she's able to do, uh, everything that she brings to the table, and Joanna with revenge and anger on her side, that's going to be a different fighter. So uh, I do think she carries that uh, and gets the win, but I think it's going to be really close. Yeah, if you had asked me the first time around, I probably would have stuck with Joanna. But after I saw what Rose was capable of, after I saw how the, the strategic her plan was against Joanna going into that fight that they first had, I really think that she can duplicate that. I think she may be the person that is just Joanna's undoing as much as I'd like to see a rubber match between the two of them to see that rivalry, like you said, blossom and grow, I think that it ends here. I think that Rose will take it, and I think that she, again, will probably finish her in dramatic fashion. But this time, I think it'll be a submission. I think she's going to throw Joanna off a little bit and get it to the ground because she's very crafty on the ground, and I think that's yeah. where she's going to have an advantage. Going to the last, we thought that the only real chance that Rose had was getting a submission, and she ended up knocking her out. So. She showed she has a lot of tools, and I wouldn't be surprised if she does win, if it is by submission. And Tony, um, I keep saying Tony, but I don't know why he's stuck in my brain. Probably because it was something we weren't supposed to mention, and now that the fight's over, I keep going with it and saying, like, oh, this fight was supposed to happen. But it's pretty funny, because I went to Extreme Couture yesterday, and I was able to catch up with one of the guys fighting on the UFC on Fox 29 card, Brad Tavares, and he also had the same superstition that you and I did. And he also <laughs> weighed in on what's going to happen between Max Holloway and how his fight with Habib Nurmagomedov at UFC 223 is going to be able to really make him a legend. I feel like it's a win-win for him, uh, regardless of the outcome of that fight. He'll get paid. He doesn't put his belt on the line. He has a chance to, like he said, become a legend and become a legit two-division champion. You know, no, like, Nothing against Conor McGregor, but Max is coming up from 45 to fight one of the best lightweights maybe ever, you know. And uh, if he beats Khabib, then I see him as a legit champion. It seems like once everybody becomes champions, they're looking up and down at where they can fight next, where the next paycheck is. But Max, you know, I mean, you got to watch your money, but at the same time, it's about his legacy. He's trying to be the most dominant 45er ever. Really respect him for stepping up here saving the card. I was, 
I didn't want to say it like after all the pastimes of Khabib and Tony falling through I didn't even want to talk about it I didn't want to put no bad juju on it and lo and behold six days out seven days out whatever it is it falls through again you know I'm really neutral on this fight Max Max is a friend so is Khabib um, <clears throat> but you know uh, you got a back hoy and I'll see more of that interview once I get it put up here on CoveringTheCage.com. He said he's got to go with Hawaii. And he also said that maybe if Max wins this fight, that it could be the way that they get a fight card in Hawaii finally. It's been one of those things that's gone on and on and on. But Brad also gave his reasons why he thinks it hasn't happened. But he said win or lose, Max could be that guy. Do you think it'll ever happen? Uh, yeah. I mean, listen, Max Holloway continues to build his brand and build the MMA Hawaii brand. And we always thought it was going to be BJ Penn, but uh, I think they're to the level now. Max Holloway is a massive star. And uh, certainly if he wins Saturday, his, his legend continues to grow. But this is the kind of thing where, you know, saving this kind of card can, uh, can give him chips to cash in with the UFC and say, hey, listen, I did this. Now it's time to go to Hawaii. I thought it was hilarious, though, that he also wouldn't even say the name of the fight. He said he did that for all the way all the way through the entire time and i said so it was probably because i mentioned it and you mentioned it that this happened well because we had we had tony on we had tony <laughs> on last week we had to mention it and, and then we ruined it we did it's all our fault probably you could just blame I, covering I, the cage I, I <laughs> but looking ahead uh this week adam there's a lot of uh, regular engagements that you have here at ufc 223 in brooklyn ahead of uh, the fight there's going to be the lead up you have the workouts, you have the weigh-ins, you have the media day. And then also on Friday, there's going to be a huge press conference, including pretty much everyone that has a fight leading up to July International Fight Week. Uh, what do you know about the fight week and what's going to happen out there in Brooklyn? Yeah, I've got a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff going on, the normal fight week stuff, of course, as you mentioned. And then uh, there's a bunch of fighters ringing the bell to open the stock market on Friday, if there is still a stock market. I don't know. I haven't checked lately the last couple hours. Uh, I think we're both getting very poor along with everybody else with the market crashing. Uh, but yeah, we've got, we've got that, which is a cool event. And then a major press conference, as you said, everyone that's fighting uh, with a couple of fight announcements, I think, you know, fights that look like they're official, but they haven't quite been announced yet. They're going to have some of those guys showing up and participating in that press conference. Uh, should be some fireworks because, you know, if Colby Covington is fighting a Brazilian, as it looks like in Rafael Dos Anjos, uh, that could get ugly on the stage, but th I think there should be a lot of fireworks in that press conference. So, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is, we will, uh, we'll keep you up to date on. All right. That's again, Adam Hill live from Brooklyn, New York. He just got in there today, had a rough, uh, flight from what I understand, but, uh, we appreciate you coming in <laughs> again, Adam, and doing the preview and picks with us. Again, you can find all our picks on coveringthecage.com. We'll have those up a bit later this week and also uh, everything to do with coverage for UFC 223. Again, for Adam Hill, you can give him a follow on Twitter at Adam Hill LVRJ. I'm Heidi Fang at Heidi Fang on Twitter and give the show a follow at Covering the Cage on Twitter.